Morning, Kieran from Gunrats, welcome. Today we're gonna to review and shoot and play with a rifle that I've been really looking forward to. And if you can guess what it is, you'd be almost right. It's the new Tika Super Bomb. Like I said before, here is Tika's brand new super varmint. A little bit different to the previous model, which is still available. This is what they call the super varmint in the GR Tech stock. Rough tech stock, nice, beautiful texture. You can have grip in all weather conditions. These stocks have proven themselves in, in various different models in the Tika stable, and they are rock solid. And what's really nice about this stock is you have a really nice, comfortable recoil pad, nice and soft. Um, fully adjustable cheek piece for height, for elevation, so that you can always get the perfect alignment with your scope. Works very simply, undo the knurled knob, and you can adjust it to whatever height is your preference. In fact, you can come right out if you need to do it for cleaning or whatever the case may be. Yeah, you can see some knurling here, so that you've got all these different positions, and you can call them memory slots, for lack of a better word. Really nice little system. Uh, moving forward, the entire firearm is actually stainless steel, the receiver as well as the barrel, and they have finished it in a beautiful tungsten uh, Cerakote, which is very hardy, um, weather resistant and resilient, and is actually a beautiful, really nice finish. Um, the bolt, beautiful, massive bolt knob, tactical bolt knob. A nice feature which you won't see on the other Super Varmints and the Varmint series is this beautiful fluted bolt. Brings down the weight fractionally, but it also makes it more reliable in adverse conditions. If you've got snow or dust or dirt or mud, it can escape through these little slots. Really, really nice. Um, the bolt itself is very, very typical ticker. Um, one extractor, one ejector, but two locking lugs, but they are absolutely massive. The barrel on the Super Varmint, cold hammer forged, as are all the barrels that come out of the ticker and the Sarko factory. Um, the barrel is 24 inches long on the specific model, but they are also available in 20 inches. We've got the 24 inch model here today to take advantage of the barrel length in the specific caliber, which is 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, the barrel finishes off nice thin taper, very, very much your Varmint profile ending 22 millimeters on the crown. They all come stock standard with a knurled end cap. Nice knurling so you can get a good grip on that, a nice purchase. And a 5 8 24 thread is standard for your sound moderator. This is the Saku OptiSub silencer. Also a nice gray finish. The nice thing about the 5 8 24 thread is that you still have substantial barrel meat in the front but a massive shoulder on which your sound moderator can actually butt up against. It's really, really nice. Um, as far as accessories are concerned, something else I'd like to show you is this beautiful little magnetic bipod from Ticker, adjustable for length, carbon fiber legs, little rubber stoppers there at the bottom. You take the stopper off, you get a nice little metal grippy a piece at the bottom if you're using uh, this in conditions where the rubber wouldn't suit you. It folds up simply like that. You keep it in your pocket. You don't have a bipod jabbing you in the back when you're backpacking and you've got a, it slung over your shoulder. The attachment from Ticker simply slots on here onto your existing uh, front swivel stud. You still have a hole through this attachment to attach your sling. And when this is required, your bipod is required, it's magnetic. It simply pops in and there is your bipod. So this little bipod is a really nice addition to any Sarko or Tika rifle. Um, comes in a kit, comes with this little piece that fits onto your forend and it's magnetic. So it's really just keep it in your pocket, keep it in your backpack. And when you feel you have the need for a bipod, simply just pop it on open her up, she's adjustable for torque over here so that you, you can control the uh, amount, amount of resistance you have on the cant of the rifle. Um, a really, really clever system, I like it a lot. The fore end on this stock is slightly wider, really nice if you're shooting off a, off a sandbag or a rest of sorts. Um, coming back to the action, comes standard with a Picatinny rail, zero MOA. 
Very nice feature in the same color as the rest of the steelwork on the rifle. The magazine itself, very, very typical uh, ticker. What I really like about this particular one, where South Africans got quite a, a big reloading market, it's a very long magazine. So if I look at these two cartridges here, the, the one factory round I've got here is a Lapua Naturalis, which is a cartridge made by Lapua, loaded with their own um, non-lead or lead-free bullet. Um, it's relatively short when we compare it to my own homegrown hand load, which is a 139 grain Senna, also from Lapua. Um, and the beauty is that even though this is an extremely long cartridge for the caliber, it's just a length that's always worked for me, it still fits in the magazine absolutely perfectly. In fact, I'm guessing I've got a good three or four millimeters to spare that I could even go longer on the total cartridge length there, which is a really, really nice feature. The barrel on the Super Varmint is free floated, so it's absolutely not touching anything. There's no contact point between the stock and the barrel, obviously a very nice feature for um, accuracy as well as for allowing the barrel to cool. Uh, also a nice feature of the new Super Varmint is all the triggers are two stage triggers, which means that initially there's a little bit of resistance. You feel a wall and that's where she breaks. Extremely simple to set these triggers. Simply take the rifle out of the stock. There's one little screw, undo it and loosen it until you've got that right trigger pull for yourself. This one came straight out of the factory at four pounds, nine ounces. I adjusted the trigger in 30 seconds and the adjustment left me with a trigger pull of two pounds, eight ounces, which is literally two and a half pounds, which I think is absolutely fantastic for a rifle of this type. If you wanted to go lighter than that, you could safely do so by replacing the original spring with an aftermarket spring, the trigger return spring, and you could probably bring it down to around about two pounds, maybe one pound, 14 ounces. A really, really nice feature of these rifles. I like, in particular, the vertical grip. Really comfortable from shooting from a bench, shooting from the prone position. It's absolutely ideal. Perfect, perfect hand position to put your finger exactly where it's supposed to be on the trigger. The trigger, by the way, nicely curved with vertical serrations in it. Um, it's very nice because you get that real tactical feel on the trigger. And also if you're using gloves and that in very, very cold weather, I think those, those serrations will help you a little bit. Another nice feature, very typical to the ticker um, rifles, is on the recoil pad for your length of pull, very simply to increase or decrease your length of pull, you get these aftermarket spacers which can be purchased separately. You simply put in the spacers to your desired length of pull and there you go. Very, very simple system. Um, I'm dying to actually shoot this rifle and see how she performs. Here we are on this glorious December day on the range with Tika's new Super Varmint. Absolutely stunning rifle and what's really nice about it, on top of all these fantastic features, is that it's available in so many different calibers, right from, all the way from uh, 223 Remington right up to 300 Win Mag, which is really, really nice. And there's some interesting twist rates coming out next year, for example, 243 will be available in a 1 in 8 twist, which is quite nice for the local market that likes to shoot those really heavy, long ballistically coefficient bullets for long range work. Um, the reason why they're doing it overseas is because the world is going lead free, hence the bullets are becoming monolithics. They're getting a little bit longer, so they need a tighter twist rate. In South Africa, those laws don't apply yet, so we can take advantage of that and shoot really nice heavy for caliber bullets, um, which makes long range work an absolute pleasure. So, in all honesty, today is the first day I've ever been on the range with this rifle. It's the first time she's ever shot. Pre preparation, other than slapping on my old trusty scope here, um, was adjusting the trigger, which took 20, 30 seconds. Um, slapping on the silencer. I put a cleaning rod down it just to make sure that there was no factory dirt left in the barrel. And um, we have shot three shots at 20 meters just to get her on paper, nice and centered. So now we're gonna try and see what she can actually do at 100 meters, which I think is about 109 yards, 106 yards. I'm gonna start with some factory grown ammunition. Um, this ammunition was not put together specifically for this rifle. This is my go-to 6.5 Creedmoor 
cartridge um, load, um, Lapua case, Lapua brass, Lapua 139 grain center, Vitavori N550 powder, and small rifle primer. Um, we've mentioned it before, I really like the magazine because these cartridges are really long. I'm not going to tell you how long they are, but they are very long. I mean, compared to a, I don't know if you can see that, um, we've looked at it before, it's substantially longer than this La Poe factory round. So ticker guarantee a sub MOA group, which is at 100 yards, today we're shooting 100 meters, which is a little bit further. They guarantee sub MOA for three rounds. We're going to try sub MOA with five rounds. Um, bear with me, this is the first time we actually shoot her at 100 meters. So let's see how she performs. That's simply unbelievable. That's five rounds. Um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't expect more than that, and um, that far exceeds my expectations. It would be quite interesting to shoot these factory rounds. And, and like I said before, these, these are my homegrown rounds. Um, it's my go-to load. I use it pretty much on every 6.5 that I shoot. I didn't go chasing the lands. I'm not shooting a particular distance, jump off the lands. It's just my standard go-to round and um, the rifle certainly seems to like it. Let's go have a closer look at that target. I was so impressed with that little group that we shot now with five rounds of my own hand loads uh, using uh, Namo Lapua products. The the poor brass, the 139 grain Senna, and Vitavori powder. Um, we're going to try some, oh, it's the wrong way around, some Lapua Naturalis, which is a lead free bullet. I don't think I've ever shot a lead free bullet. Um, 140 grain, it's quite a nice heavy bullet. It's a hunting bullet specifically made for hunting, so we're not expecting too much from the accuracy department. The 139 grain Senna that we've already fired is a target round. Uh, nice for sporting use. This is purely a hunting bullet. Uh, recommended rate of twist is a 1.9 or faster. We got a 1.8 here with a 6.5 Creedmoor, so we are faster. Ballistic coefficient 0 0.201, which is not that great. So this should make a fantastic hunting bullet out to maybe three, 400 meters. Um, lead free. It's got a little green tip to help with the feeding, a little plastic tip. And um, quite curious to see how they shoot. I think there's a, a massive bearing surface on this bullet, hence the, the tighter required twist. Let's give it a, let's give it a bash and um, see how she performs. Now, normally for a test like this, I would insist on shooting three rounds, but um, this rifle's impressed me so much that I'm going to really challenge myself and the equipment to try five rounds. Let's see, I hope, hope that all goes well.
sorry. Okay, so that's four rounds that are unbelievably accurate. So I've got a little bit of big match temperament problems coming in for the fifth shot. I really like to keep that fifth shot in that nice little cluster. Ah, calm the nerves. Yeah, that is just simply unbelievable. I, I really wouldn't expect that of a cartridge like this, uh, which is a bit silly of me because one should only expect the very, very best of excellence coming out of the Lipua stable. And um, yeah, that's, that's just incredible. I mean, if I'm sitting here today and I can't really tell the difference between a Lipua Senna bullet and a lead-free hunting bullet at 100 meters, that kind of blows my mind. Um, I had to take a big breath for that fifth one because I had four literally bang, bang, bang and I was really scared I was going to damage that group with a fifth. Um, yeah, that's just absolutely remarkable. Um, I'll tell you what makes it quite easy as well is this trigger. Um, all my rifles that I currently shoot are single stage triggers. So you touch the trigger, pull it to two, two and a half pounds, bang. And this rifle's a little different. Um, Let's make sure the chamber is in fact empty. I'm going to take the magazine out for this exercise. If you have a look at this trigger, you've got play here at the beginning. Then there's a little bit of resistance. I don't know if you can hear that. And that is where your two pounds and eight ounces starts. Bang. And that little pre-feel actually really helps you settle in behind the target and pull off a really, really accurate shot. So you get on target, you get nice and comfortable, you start squeezing the trigger, and right there, when you hit that little wall, you know exactly this is where my shot's going to go off. Bang. Um, it really does make shooting this rifle really, really easy. And everything else is really comfortable. Um, I've actually just realized that I didn't even adjust the cheek piece to get perfect scope alignment. I mean, this should be a little bit higher. should be about there. Um, I just got so excited in the moment um, of shooting this magnificent rifle. It just really is mind-blowing, and I think Tika have really put a lot of R&D into this rifle. I think they've spoken to the right people to get their opinions, and um, everything just seems to work exceptionally well. So I want to stretch your legs now while the wind is nice and calm. I want to shoot a very small gong, attempt to shoot a very small gong, at 300 meters. And I think that's what time allows for today. Now, normally I'd want to impress the viewer, um, and impress the supplier and the sponsors and shoot my hand-loaded ammunition and accomplish that at 300 meters. But today, I'm so impressed with this little hunting bullet from Le Poir. I'm going to load up three rounds here. Set my dope. And I want to see if we can hit that gong at 300 meters. Not forget our ears. The last time I shot, I actually set that too high. Look how easy that is. Ah, perfect. Three, four, three, 300 meters, ticker super varmint, 6.5 Creedmoor, La Pua factory ammunition, natural is 140 grains, 300 meters, which means I would be, that gong is about so big. And I actually think I've been smacking the center out of it. Uh, looks like I doped a little bit on the high side, so center to high which means that um, I could shoot pretty much any game animal comfortably to 300 meters, and I am sure much further with this particular rifle. So play around with it, get the right load for it, go to the range, zero her, check your dope on targets, gongs, and um, shoot as far as you like as, as, as long as you're accurate at that range. So let's have some fun with this Ticker Super Varmint. I've got a small Cocan. Um, I put it up at 200 meters. 
And I just want to show you this wonderful magnetic system on the bipod. Look how simple that is. Pop it out, stick it up on the table, and we're literally good to go. It's a fantastic system and it weighs next to nothing. It's made out of carbon. We're just going to shoot one of my hand loads. Uh, I've got a silencer on. I'm actually going to take a shot without my earmuffs this time. And uh, we've got a camera focused on that can at 200 meters. Let's send it. Yep, I think that sent. Such a lot of fun. Buy this rifle, you will not be disappointed. Go and inquire at your nearest dealer. Ask them about the ticker super varmint in the caliber of your choice in the Geotech stock. Um, remember, this is a stainless steel gun. It's just Cerakoted with this tungsten Cerakote, which I think is absolutely stunning. It actually matches the OptiSup silencer from the Saku company. And this combination has just worked exceptionally well today. Um, I, I can recommend this 100%. What a lovely rifle.